Now let's consider the American Staffordshire Terrier's neck and forequarters. The neck is strong and muscular, especially along the crest, to accentuate the arch like this. The neck widens gradually to blend smoothly into the withers. It should be firm and clean, with no loose skin. Throatiness, or any sign of a dewlap, is faulty. See how the length of neck is approximately equal to the length of head. This neck, on the other hand, appears too short and coarse, which is incorrect. Forequarters are strong and muscular, without appearing loaded. See how the shoulders are well laid back, meeting the upper arm at about a right angle. The shoulder blade should be wide for maximum muscle attachment. They should slope backward and inward from the bottom edge of the blade to the top. From the front, you can see that the shoulder blades slope outward from the withers and are well muscled without appearing heavy or coarse. These weak, loose shoulders are not correct. But neither are these overmuscled, loaded shoulders. These shoulders are properly muscled and slope outward from withers to the juncture with the upper arm. What about these shoulders? They are too straight and are not correct. These shoulders are correct, well laid back and meeting the upper arm at about a right angle. See how the elbow is placed at the bottom of the brisket. Note also the full, well-muscled forechest. Forelegs should be straight, seen from the side, with large, round bones. Pasterns are short, strong, and nearly upright, like these. Dew claws on the front legs may be removed. Front feet are compact, moderate in size, and oval in shape. They should turn neither in nor out. They should be well arched with thick pads and toes of medium length. It should appear that the dog's weight is carried up on the feet. Flat or splayed feet are a fault. From the front, the chest is deep and broad, but no broader than it is deep. The front legs tuck neatly against the brisket and are well under the dog with the elbows turning neither in nor out. A so-called bulldog front with its broad chest and crooked legs with curved forearms is faulty, as is a shallow brisket. Legs that appear to be tacked on the sides of the dog giving a wide appearance may have nothing to do with the width and depth of the chest. Now let's discuss the Amstaff's top line and body. The body is compact, balanced, powerful, and well-muscled. In outline, the Amstaff should appear slightly off-square. That is, the length of body from forechest to end of rump is slightly longer than height at the shoulders. This dog's body proportions are correct. But this dog appears nearly equal in body length and height, which is not desirable. And here, the body appears too long. This too is incorrect. This bitch appears correctly off square, being neither cobby nor too long. Her body depth is also correct measured from top of shoulder to lowest part of the brisket, which should be at the elbow. You can see that this is about half the total height of the dog. See how the top line slopes gently from the withers to the start of the slightly arched, strong loin, and from there, gently sloping to the base of the tail. This flat top line is a fault. Remember, the Amstaff's top line should slope smoothly from withers to loin, though there is a slight arch of muscle over the loin. This roach back is also a fault. A dippy top line like this is also incorrect. 
This correct top line slopes smoothly from shoulder to loin, with no part higher than the shoulders. See how the rib cage is well sprung and oval in shape, extending well back, about two thirds the length of the underline. A short rib cage, shallow ribs, or barrel ribs are all faulty. See how the underline tapers slightly from behind the elbows. It is tightly muscled, with the underbelly sweeping gently upward in a pleasing curve to the flank. A brood bitch of excellent type whose underbelly has not tightened should not be unduly penalized. This excessive tuck-up gives a racy appearance, which is also faulty. This dog's underline and top line are correct. Remember that the Amstaff has a long rib cage extending about two-thirds the length of the underbelly. Length of body must be in the rib cage and not in the loin. When viewed from above, the loins are narrower and are indented from the ribs to the hips. This dog is slightly wider across the shoulder than he is across the hips. This is proper. Loins themselves are broad, strong, and compact like this. The loin should be flexible in keeping with the breed's remarkable agility. The croup is full, broad, and short with a gentle downward slope like this. The tail is moderately broad at the base, tapering to a point. It is set low on a sloping croup. It should be relatively short, reaching no lower than the hock joint. The ideal tail resembles an old-fashioned pump handle and should not be carried much above the level of the back when the dog is moving. This flat croup and high tail set is not desirable. This is a low tail set on a steep croup. Hindquarters are strong and moderately well angulated in balance with the correct front angulation. They should provide spring and drive. First and second thighs are long and prominently muscled. See how they appear broad across when seen from the side. From the rear, you can see that the thighs appear thick with the musculature apparent on both the inner and outer surfaces of the leg. See how the rear legs are straight. Like the front feet, the rear feet turn neither in nor out and are strong, compact, and well arched with strong toes. This dog is correctly angulated. Note again the short, straight, upright rear pasterns. There are no dew claws on the rear legs. What about this dog's hindquarters? They appear weak with narrow thighs and are undesirable. This dog has the correct broad, muscular thighs. You can see that the thighs are almost as wide as the shoulder blades at their widest point. Stifles should be angulated so that the rear feet with their upright pasterns are just behind a line dropped straight down from the rump as the dog stands naturally. Such a line would also just strike the tips of the toes. Hocks should be well let down like these. This dog is over-angulated in the rear, while this one is too straight in the rear. Both are faulty. More important than angulation within front or rear quarters is that there be balance between front and rear quarters, which is a critical component of Amstaff type. The Amstaff's coat is short, close, and very glossy. It is stiff to the touch. As for color, the Amstaff may be solid colored, party colored, patched, or brindle. Amstaffs come in a variety of colors, from cream to black, with all shades of fawn.
Brendling may be seen in all hues from light stripes on a black coat to black stripes on a fawn coat. Pigment on nose, eye rims, and lips should be complete and appear black. This dilute color, blue, is acceptable. In the blues, the nose color, as well as eye rims and lips, will be a dark charcoal. Eye color may be gray in blue dogs, but must be dark. The darker, the better. Less desirable is this head with one eye rim pigmented and one eye rim unpigmented. And this nose, which is not completely pigmented. There are two coat colors which are not acceptable, however. Liver color, which may occur with or without white markings or brindling, is unacceptable. And this tan point pattern, with or without white markings or brindling, is also not acceptable. The M staff's gait should be smooth, effortless, and free from roll. There should be good reach and drive with the feet moving close to the ground. Coming at you, see how the front legs remain straight, being thrown neither in nor out. There is slight convergence toward a central line of gravity as speed increases. Going away, note the straight column from hip to foot, with the rear legs traveling in a lateral plane. Note the good rear drive. There is also convergence toward a central line with increased speed. This dog is traveling too wide in front. He is towing in and swinging his front legs. This dog is moving too close in the rear. This is restricted gait. This dog is taking too many steps. Here again is correct movement, efficient, but with a definite spring. You should get a sense of controlled power. Remember, there are five key features to your evaluation of the American Staffordshire Terrier. Strong, typical Amstaff head. Sufficient musculature, bone, and substance. Correct proportions and balance with no exaggerations. Soundness of structure, combining power, agility and movement, an outgoing temperament. Finally, a word about temperament. The American Staffordshire Terrier, despite his origins as a fighting dog, is one of the most obedient, loyal, and affectionate of breeds. The Amstaff is especially reliable with children and can be an ideal family pet. He is never shy nor uncontrollably aggressive. His courage is proverbial and he is keenly alive to his surroundings. The fighting ancestry of the Amstaff has long been bred out, and any attempt to equate the American Staffordshire Terrier with the American Pit Bull Terrier is wrong. Any use of the term Pit Bull to describe the American Staffordshire Terrier is incorrect and frequently inflammatory. Please use the breed's correct name anytime you refer to it. He is expected to be friendly, and well-behaved. The Amstaff is happy, outgoing, stable, confident, and tractable. And it is these qualities which have endeared him to loyal fanciers.